and Mission of Burma drummer Peter Prescott were walking through Kenmore Square and Steve uh, made a comment about there being more bums than usual and Peter retorted that no they're just getting younger and uh, that accounted for the plethora of homeless people in Kenmore Square and we just took that idea and made it even more absurd I think in the verses Steve and Phil the little melody of the younger bums are coming to win us that came out of that was inspired by uh, a Cat Stevens song. And we knew it was, it was pretty obvious that it was. We gave him songwriting credit. Uh, you know, we, we checked, I think, we, didn't we have to check with his publishing company to make sure? We were okay. afraid there was going to be a problem, so we did hard, a preemptive. In those days, he was kind of hard to track down. Yeah. In the in the late eighties, so um, but it was a melody that you know I don't know that it was stolen any more than borrowed. And the flaming lips would have done, but it was an, a catchy series of notes from uh, what's the song? Uh, longer, longer yeah, boats. the longer boats are coming to to win yeah, us. I, I guess, guess it was. Yeah. So. Longer See? boats, younger bums. Yeah. It was a natural. Yeah. My good sense tells me that tonight's the big night. I'll check the level on my side. Smoke grabs all going out together. All going out together. All going out together. All going out together. Steve had a dream that he was at a Bruce Springsteen concert and Bruce Springsteen was singing all going out together and he came into a rehearsal one day with a simple little bass line and a few lyrics and it was one of those collaborative efforts where everyone had their part to add and it seemed to me, it may have taken longer than this, but it seemed to me that it took about 10 minutes to put the song together. If that, it just really came together. And we didn't have a complete set of lyrics. Bill and Steve worked on, on those, and it just happened very naturally. We were playing a new song and not working on it. And I think you can hear that when bands do that, and when we did that. We wanted to find a balance of, you know, of poppy, poppiness with a, with a dark subject, and it gives you know, balance with it. It's a it's a it's a heavy subject, but it's done in a light way. I think that was one of the first songs of yours that got a lot of your playing Fox things in take it and all these parts and all about that one. That was the first song that Bill and I wrote together on his porch about a year, well, maybe eight or ten months before Big Dipper was really even a, a gigging band. And uh, Bill had this really catchy chorus and a line that went, she's fetching, and then long blank. And, uh, I came up with a line, no, no, that's wrong, she is blank, and I came up with fetching. Oh, really? And we went to the dictionary and fleshed out the verses with the various definitions of the term fetching. Nerds that we were, it was fascinating to find out how many different definitions there were for the word fetch, and, uh, and, they, and they all worked into the song, and then uh, we thought, well, well if we think it's so interesting to learn about that word, 
the rest of the music crowd in Boston's going to be fascinated by it, man. By it, I'm sure. So. 99% you! Well, we found out who our new lead singer is! <laughs> About halfway done with an album's worth of stuff, which we're recording in my basement. It, it's a nice informal setting that allows us to partake in what Bill termed guerrilla recording, just in and out real quick. In doing those reunion shows after so long not, of not playing, we learned, you know, okay, what would it take to get together and get the juices flowing and, and be able to play and all that. And that was a lot of fun, but it was, you know, uh, it was a lot of work to get up to a certain speed. And then we, um, we started having more fun with the creative part of that and found that if we keep the momentum going somewhat, you know, the, not, it's not day to day like it used to be, but it's like month to month. A little by little. And make the best use of the time that we can. And as a, as a result of that, we're doing a whole lot of writing. We're not doing so much playing and practicing, but we're doing a whole lot of writing and having a lot of time to uh, reflect on things we're putting together, listen and, and think about what to do with those ideas. And it's it's a really, I think it's a really great creative process. To the realist that I am, I would say that if we got it done by the end of the year, we'd be doing pretty well. But it's not like we have to meet any deadlines or satisfy any expectations other than our own. So the whole process has been very liberating because, you know, there's no limitation of studio time. We're doing it in my basement. We're not racking up you know, hours at $90 an hour, or whatever they are these days. And we're not having to deal with major label <laughs> coming in and ruining the vibe and everything else in our lives. Uh, we just do it because we love to do it and it's fun. If they see the light of day, it'll be great. If people like them, great. If they don't, we all have careers and families that occupy us otherwise. So. It wouldn't be the biggest tragedy if we did this record and no one paid any attention to it. We're having fun. That's enough. So, so how did that compare to playing those songs at the Rat or the Channel? It smells better in here than it <laughs> did in other of those places. It's much more difficult. This is much, I think, much more difficult. It's difficult. As I was saying before, I played the guitar part to All Going Out Together uh, just hundreds if not thousands of times and it's just sort of ingrained even 20 years later you remember the parts and you pretty much remember how to play them on a real guitar but on rock band it's just it's very different because there are f sometimes fewer notes to play in the case of younger bums the uh, my guitar part and Bill's guitar part were comped which I didn't realize until maybe a verse and part of a chorus had elapsed so <clears throat> excuse me it was very difficult to kind of get ready for those changes on the fly it's not something I'm used to because this is only the second time I've played rock band Bill you had to sing it exactly as you sang it on the record right did you did that match up I didn't know how forgiving it was going to be of course now for years I've had the lyrics scrolling across the screen in front of me when I'm singing <laughs> so I was used to that quite com no but I like the graphic of the up and down that it shows you like the, the note's going to go up here and it's going to go down it's going to sustain that was cool but i was trying to like my head was going up and down and i would see the note okay go up here and down here and, and um it is helpful but it's hard to be that precise i think and it's tricky i nailed it and he did better on the singing my part than i did you did didn't you i don't, I don't know you got a 99 i don't even know what if i got that good of a score See, I, I've always been a feel guitarist. I, I just precision is, I could be precise if I wanted to, but I, yeah. And Jeff, you played expert like 10 minutes into your first session in the game. I don't think that gets done very often. Well, I noticed that the, the harder it gets, the more notes you have to play. So I actually could play the, the song the way it was, whereas on easy, it's almost like half, half notes. Does it, it work that like way with the singer? Like I could have sung just maybe every, first word of every line <laughs> just the good just the good lines <laughs>
did your hands wind up kind of instinctively doing what you do when you play the songs in uh, real life? Uh, yes, but at the same time, then I caught myself looking at the colors and trying to hit the the colors, which kind of threw me off a little bit. But and then by the third time I did, I just said, just play it like I would normally play it. I think I scored the highest doing it that way. But it's really fun. Yeah, you have to anticipate them. You can see them coming. And then you told me you can just do all these different fills, so it leaves space in there just to do different fills. And then she's, what was it, all going out together? That, that had really never been the case before, so I just started doing rolls. Yeah. All the guys lead. Oh, we didn't try the, uh, what was that song by uh, Corpse Grinder or whatever they are? Yes, somebody on our board said that uh, their two favorite bands were Big Dipper and Cannibal Corpse. So we, For a rock band. For Probably rock not in, in the, the rest of the world, but on rock band, yeah, that, that took me by surprise. But having not played a Cannibal Corp song on rock band yet, I can't really say whether that's a good combo or not. But wouldn't that be great? Our, our musical career ends at the <laughs> harmonics offices. Yeah, that would be great.